Hi, I'm Jonathan Mitchell. I'm the Director of Business Services for the Greendale Schools. And today wanted to share information regarding the Greendale Schools operational referendum. So thank you for taking some time to go through this presentation and slides uh, to gain additional information on the operational referendum. The Greendale School Board approved ballot language and approved a resolution for a question to be placed on the April 2nd of 2023 ballot. And that language is listed here. Shall the Greendale School District, Milwaukee County, Wisconsin, be authorized to exceed the revenue limit specified in section 121.91, Wisconsin statutes by $2,500,000 per year, for five years, beginning with the 24-25 school year and ending with the 2028-2029 school year for non-recurring purposes consisting of operational and maintenance expenses. And in short, what this means is it would allow the board to tax an additional $2.5 million per year for five school years for operational costs. And operational costs meaning teachers, utilities, busing, other staff, and that would be allowed beyond the current revenue limits in place. The district has done a projection of what that budget forecast would look like if the referendum were approved and the additional 2.5 million was added to the tax levy. And that projection, as you see out here from 2024 to 2025, out five years, um, has a projection that would be no higher than $100,000 above the current school tax levy level. And so a basic question is, how could the district limit the total increase in tax levy if there's an operational referendum in place. And so here's a bar chart that helps to explain that story. And you see a few different colors here and a couple colors that I'd ask you to key in on. And looking at the slide are the spaces that are in blue and the um, bars that are in red. And so the bars that are in blue that are listed here are the tax levy for operational costs. So the portion of the school tax levy that's for our operations, again, teacher salary, busing, running the day-to-day -day operations of the school district. And then in red, what's listed here is the amount of debt prepayment. Debt prepayment is something that you can see from the chart that the school board has done for three years. And we'll talk about some of the reasons why the school board um, uh, made the decision and found that beneficial to do that, but it has uh, been in place while also keeping a consistent tax levy. And so beginning with the 24-25 year, the assumption with a referendum approval is that that red bar shrinks, that under the scenario that a referendum were approved, the board would stop prepaying debt, but would continue to levy for the annual uh, referendum costs for principal and interest. And so you see that red bar shrinks to zero in 24-25, but the blue bar expands. And so the net of uh, that, that change is a projection over that five-year period of time that that could go up by an additional $100,000. And so the question is, how would that impact me as a property taxpayer in the village of Greendale? So the calculation of that, that maximum impact uh, over that five-year period of time would be a 0.65% increase. And so depending on what your property valuation would be, um, you can estimate what that dollar value would be on an annual basis. 
So if I were in a $250,000 house, that would be $13 annually and 450,000, that would be a $23 annual rate. And if you have that exact number of your home value, you can use the mill rate, which is that property tax rate per every hundred, every thousand dollars of property valuation and multiply that. So if I had a $400,000 house, I could use the mill rate with the referendum of $8.34 and then multiply that times uh, $400. And the increase is going to be that net between the mill rate with the referendum and the current 23, 24 mill rate. So if I had that $400,000 house, the impact, if approved, is this is going from $8.29 to $8.34. So that would be five cents per thousand. So if I multiplied that times 400, that would come to about $20 annually. So at this point, when we have live presentations, we go through some questions, but we're gonna keep um, going on here in the presentation to get some of that information um, out. So well, the next question is, why is there a budget deficit? in the Greendale schools. And the answer there is it is an impact of spendable revenue caps that have been below inflation for 15 years. So here we see a visual representation of that. The blue line representing actual spendable revenues that have cumulatively been in place from 2008 through the current biennial budget and what is in gray is based off of the CPI index method. So the state legislature's method for calculating how much school spendable revenue should be increased. So that model was created by the state legislator in 1998 um, and was paused uh, after 2008 due to the financial recession and it has not been continued since. So the cumulative impact here is shown that you see this gap as the um, space between the gray line on the chart and the blue line has continued to grow as those spendable revenue increases have not kept play, pace with inflation. And so the cumulative impact over that period of time is $3,380 per student. And then if you want to see the detail of how we get to that total deficit amount here on the screen, you can see that total impact by year. And then the cumulative impact by the time we get to the end of the biennium in the 24-25 school year is $3,380. In particular here as well, we have the impact of a spendable revenue freeze in the last biennium budget, which was 21 through 2023. What this has also meant is that the state has fallen in its ranking of per pupil funding and spendable revenues compared to other states in the country. And so the state of Wisconsin has fallen overall from 11th to 25th and the latest rankings in per pupil spending. So to quantify what that impact is on Greendale, if we take the total student served of 2,613 times that gap of $3,381, we would get to an annual revenue shortfall versus inflation of 8,834,000 $553. So that's approximately what the gap is in inflationary revenue that the district would have available for programming. So the next question we want to answer is what has the district done to reduce the budget under the revenue limits? And so we want to share information on how the district has reduced the budget and sought other sources of revenues. 
So one way we do this is continual budget planning and refinement. So our team, our board and leadership team works together with shared values for how we develop the budget. And then we have ongoing conversations that are data-driven where we are trying to identify efficiencies that are given to us through the data and how we can align resources. Second, utilization of local, state, and federal contract savings. So when the district goes through the process of updating a copier piece of equipment in our school buildings, we're utilizing state contracts that have been pre-bid and we have access to those and utilize those to make sure we're getting the best pricing. We can take advantage of that even with a smaller business office staff than the resources the state would have. The district has reduced staffing in the business office in technology, as well as contracting custodial staff positions for savings. So the district has sought some efficiencies through operations to have the least amount of impact on the classroom. And then lastly, the district shares support services for the park and recreation program. So we are somewhat unique in the state in that the school district also oversees and manages the park and recreation department. And so when we get to things like our payroll and benefits, and our accounts payable, we share those same staff members for both programs. And so we're able to cost share those costs of providing support services as well. And that helps our operational budget. Another key item that the district has done has been finding efficiencies within the health insurance plan. And so one way we've done that is transitioning to a self-funded model to try and manage the rate of increase of inflationary costs on the plan. The districts increased the premium share that employees pay for health insurance, as well as developed a significant amount of direct contracting for medical services for cost savings. So that could mean someone that needs to have an MRI or a CT scan that is not an urgent need to have that procedure done uh, would go to a preferred provider where the district has a direct contract and a service that might cost three, four, five thousand dollars in a hospital system might be delivered just as effectively at $700 through a direct contract that we have in place. Next, the district has reduced school building supply budgets. The district also is working with a citizen facilities team on capital planning. So about two years ago, the district brought together some experts that are within the community as architects or general contractors to help us look at how we score and prioritize our projects and help us think outside the box in terms of identifying projects that may actually save uh, the district through energy efficient efficiency or that we could get creative in finding uh, additional revenue sources to complete. And so that work has resulted in us being able to complete some projects more cost efficiently by um, creative problem solving, as well as helping the district to identify what are the key projects to take on. The district shares services with the village of Greendale. So shared services can include our technology director for the district, it includes school resource officers that are shared between the schools and the village and also includes shared projects. So we've recently completed a park and recreation study and now are also um, working together on engineering services when we take on parking lot maintenance and upgrades in our district facilities. So finding ways 
to split those costs and complete projects more cost effectively. Um, and then lastly, from a revenue generation standpoint, the thing that's most impactful is when class size targets allow, we'll add open enrollment seats. So the next question is, what has the district done to address the state funding shortfall? And so we wanna talk about how the district has engaged with key legislators. All board members, myself and Dr. Kim Amidzik, our superintendent, participated in the day at the Capitol where we had the opportunity to meet with our legislators and their staffs to talk about the need for spendable increases for and to keep up with inflationary costs for the district. We've also presented at the Joint Finance Committee meeting in April of 2023. So myself, our school board president, and Dr. Midzik, were all three present to give public testimony regarding the need for inflationary increases in alignment with the board's public policy priorities. And so this chart lays out the impact of the 23-25 state budget. And specifically, we are looking at revenue allocations for the 23-24, so the first year of the biennium budget. So the Greendale School Board, when they updated their school board public policy priorities, increased the amount of pu per pupil spending and they're asked by $1,107 or 9.1%. And that reflects the need for an inflationary increase given the freeze in the 21-23 biennium. And so the need for a three-year catch up from an inflationary cost perspective. In what was approved in the state budget, Schools that are K-8 voucher schools received an increase of $1,430, or 17%. Those schools that are at grades 9-12 that are vouchers received an increase of $3,342, which would be a 37% increase. Students that are in the open enrollment program received an increase of $394, or 4.8%. 8%. So those are public school students that transfer between different communities from their home resident community. And then finally, the impact on the Greendale schools. So the increase of $325 is an increase of 2.67%. And again, that reflects the increase for a three-year period after the two-year freeze. And so visually, just that same chart that's reflected for a visual comparison, that section in the green would reflect that portion of Greendale schools increase relative to those other groups. So what does this mean for the Greendale schools budget? The budget deficit that exists is not sustainable for Greendale schools. So despite the fact that the expenditure budget increased only 2.3% from last school year, the district currently has a $1,588,202 deficit for the 23-24 school year. And what this would mean is that the fund balance, the dollars that are reserved um, in the district would decrease to $5,444,000 or 15.2% of the budget. And the board sets a target to maintain a minimum fund balance at 15% or above with the work towards eliminating short-term borrowing and having dollars on hand for any emergency expenditures. So here you see that visual comparison, the current fund balance just over $7 million and the projection at the end of the year of 5,444,000. So if nothing changes, that fund balance would be fully gone and depleted by 2026. And so here we have that chart starting 
by the end of the 23-24 school year and would be at 5.4 million and by the end of 24-25 about 3 million and would be fully expended by the end of the 25-26 school year. So the board discussed this uh, and identified two different needs. <coughs> Excuse me. Two different needs at the October 23rd meeting. And those needs were, the options were reducing programming or seeking a voter operational referendum. And included in the presentation that's posted online is a link to that video from October 23rd to be able to review. And so option one, reducing programming. So the potential impact of that program reduction. So what was discussed is in order to reach the savings level needed of the currently 230 instructional staff, approximately 20 to 25 full-time positions would need to be eliminated in order to reach the $2 million in savings. And so what this will have an impact on is reducing the variety of programming within the school districts, increasing class sizes, reducing support services, and also reducing programming not required by law. And so that will have an impact on the variety of programming that these students and others in our school district have access to. So option two, the board reviewed, is the option to go to a voter approved operational referendum. Operational referendums are not uncommon in the state of Wisconsin. From 2014 through 2023, there were 61% of the state of Wisconsin that have asked an operational referendum question. This is a five year chart of school tax levy within the Greendale schools. So here we see the trend from the 2019-20 school year and on, there has been an approximately $500,000 decrease in the overall school tax levy. So another question is how can you say my taxes will go up less than 1% with an additional $2.5 million referendum? So we began this conversation at the beginning of the presentation, but to talk about this further, it's the replacement of prepayment of debt with operational costs. So this chart, again, we took a look at earlier, shows that projection of future years within $100,000 of that current school tax levy. And we have the changing of funding in the red. The debt prepayment would go away under the referendum and would be replaced with operational costs in 24, 25. And so you see the impact of not, uh, not having to prepay the debt if, a, if this were approved. And you also see in the yellow bar chart, we did not talk about before, but there's some debt for energy projects that is also falling off. And so that allows the school district, if there were a voter approved referendum, to be able to fill in that amount with operational tax levy and still maintain a relatively flat um, projection. So again, the impact on homeowners, if it were approved, these are the projections based on home value in 2023 using that 0.65% increase. So some additional information on why the school board has been involved with uh, levying for debt prepayment. 
So it's in the best interest of the community to prepay the debt. It's allowed the tax levy to remain steady and decrease the overall debt liability the school district has. And cumulatively over a three year period that it's equaled $5.5 million. If the school board would decide to discontinue prepaying debt, it would still be on track to pay off all debts on schedule by 2039. And that's in alignment with what was discussed and presented as part of the 2018 referendum. Then what is the total impact? Total impact of savings by debt prepayment from to the 2021 calendar year through next year when that final debt prepayment amount would be uh, uh, reinvested for paying down that debt. The total interest savings will be $1.2 million. So interest avoidance for the community. The district maintains a strong AA2 bond rating, which helps maintain lower interest rates on borrowing. And the current interest rate for Greendale School's debt is 3.6%. And that compares with rates that you see on savings accounts of 4 to 5% currently, and long-term borrowing rates, which can be 6 to 7% or more in the current environment in December of 2023. So with that, if you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can reach me by phone, 414-423-2705, or you can reach me via email at jonathan.mitchell at greendaleschools.org. So I appreciate you making the time to have the conversation, be engaged in this virtual format. Feel free to reach out to me if you'd like additional information or you have questions, or feel free to look for further information on our school district website, greendaleschools.org. And if you go under the district tab, you will find our website with all of our information resources regarding the 2024 operational referendum. Thank you.